So good afternoon and welcome to another edition of my photography vlog and the series in the landscape of photographer profiles and for this edition I have come to Dingle Peninsula to meet with an excellent photographer his name is John Hooten and John is well versed on the area of Dingle entirety and he also has um, many an interesting shot both from his film days and right through to digital uh, that he shoots on at the moment. So I'm going to uh, talk with John in a moment, just get him set up there and hopefully he'll be able to give us some good hints and tips in regards to how he takes a photo, what makes him tick and also I suppose really is the best advice that he can give somebody like I've done in the other uh, episodes for a photographer not only starting out but also who wants to perfect their craft. My style of photography, um, I like a strong foreground interest um, and very strong skies then, um, especially with a good drama in the sky. Um, the foreground interest I like tends to be very minimalist. Um, I don't like a lot of clutter in the photographs and I, I don't like a lot of rocks. I tend to single out certain things. Patterns and shapes are very important. Um, it is really what's happening in the foreground is what I put the emphasis on. The sky and the backdrop is just an additional to, to it, like, which is really what's going on in the foreground. Um, I like dark, moody type images, but I also like very pastel, and I can switch from one to the other very quickly. And sometimes it can depend on the mood, my own mood, um, whether it's going to be pastel, um, nice soft images, uh, long exposures. Uh, so I can vary a little bit. Um, as regards the, the thing, but the general setup of them t tends to be very similar um, in how I place things. Um, that's basically. I don't worry about, about things like having a horizon um, in, in a certain position. It is in the centre. It is in the centre. And if it looks right, what's wrong with it? I know you say you're supposed to have things on the rule of thumb. I, I, I tend to ignore that type of stuff. Now we do have to learn, you know, certain things. But then you learn how to break these certain rules as well. And I always feel, when you look at something, and if it looks right and feels right, then it is right. <music> Equipment doesn't really matter to me, as regards what name is on the camera. That's incidental. Um, I so happen to be using Nikon at the moment. Um, like I spent 25, 25 years shooting film with a, a, a Canon T90. Um, when I made that switch to digital, um, I didn't go looking for a Canon camera to follow it. I just happened to get a very good deal on a Nikon D3, and I have it since. Yeah. So I'm not one for constantly chopping and changing. Uh, that D3, I have it since my switch to digital, which is about seven years ago. Um, I have two lenses. I have a, a 16 to 35 and a 24 to 70. That's it. Oh, 
okay, um, I, I plan my shots, um, I plan where I'm going to go, um, because the worst thing you can do is be racing around the place, um, especially at sunset, you know, going between places and you end up getting nothing. So you pick a spot basically, and if it's working, stay with it. Um, then give myself plenty of time to get set up. Um, I, 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 as I say, I tend to have a shot in mind. So what's in the photograph, in the foreground. Now sometimes certain things happen and other things are there and I, I would go after that. Um, I rely on the filters then totally. Um, then the, the Lee grads, um, I, I usually have two of them. I have um, a 0.9 soft grad and a, point, a 1.2 soft glad. I like the soft glad, it just gives a bit more flexibility. Now, as you probably can see from the camera, there's no holder on it. I hand hold these. Okay. Now, it isn't the best advice because they can get marked and damaged and things like that, but I'm kind of resigned to, I have to replace these once a year or maybe once a, every year and a half. But what, what the hand holding allows me to do is over the exposure when the light is on that side, when the light is on that side, I tend to move these you know accordingly now it can be hit and miss as well but I've learned to kind of and I learned that from being inside in the dark room and dodging and burning um, even though I didn't do an awful lot of dark room work um, but moving the moving the filter like that you know over the exposure up and down as well um, that's kind of my approach to, to it because uh, I, I, I'm not a multiple image person I'm not a HDR person and I'm not a big Photoshop person even though I do obviously use Photoshop, uh, nothing wrong with it, it's a fantastic piece of software. But this, if I hadn't that in that bag, I'd be going home. I wouldn't, I can't operate, I have to have these. Uh, so that's it. Neutral density filter, um, I have a, I have a, a three stop uh, neutral density. Okay, you have the 10 stops and all these big stoppers and things like that. They're fine and they can be a little bit gimmicky sometimes. We all try them, um, but I kind of settle on the, the tree stop because I mean the light's going to be low anyway um, and I don't want to I want to keep some little bit of detail in the water if, I, if I'm using water which I do most of the time anyway and um, a little bit of movement in the clouds so I, I don't go for anything over 30 seconds normally now the reason that is is I don't have a remote and I don't have anything because I had a few of them and I kept losing them dropping them leaving them falling to the water so I said stick that um, I didn't bother with it anymore so I keep on my there's none of my, exp ex my exposures go over 30 seconds. Okay. That's I keep them. That's the kind of My top tip, um, if I was advising someone, I always tell people, follow their own path. As in, photography goes through trends. Uh, it has always, everything goes through trends. But I've always kind of steered my own path and I've always stayed on it. Um, listen to other people's advice but you don't necessarily have to take it all on board but listen to people look at other people's work i'm always looking at other people's images not that you want to copy them or anything like that it's just you get influenced certain ways by by different people um go to exhibitions do all that kind of thing um, like it's never been as easy to look at pictures today with what we have with facebook and websites and everything you can look at pictures all over the place like when we were back in the film days like we had very little to be looking at like um, and we certainly couldn't see our images at the back of the camera when we had them taken. So we were totally reliant on our skill with the light meter. Um, so I always tell people like, okay, you go to competitions, if you, it's nice to win competitions, but competitions only a sort really of small part of it. Like um, judges will say certain things, you don't have to say that's exactly right. The same as what I'm telling you now, I'm not saying that's right either. You know, so, you know, do your own thing. Okay, um, again, landscape photography were totally dependent. Well, all photography were depending on light, whether it is artificial light or whether it is natural light. But like with me, I'm depending totally on, on light. So you need to get out there and the locations, visit them at various times, mainly morning, mainly evening. And then the time of the year is the most important. Like the sun here this evening, if you come back here in January, it'll be way over there. So explore if you can if you have the if you if you're in a position to explore a, a particular spot um, and you're fortunate enough to be able to come and visit um, 
visit it as many times and keep going back. Like people often say to me, you're taking the same picture at the same time. Every time I take a picture, it's different. Even though certain things will be the same. The island is going to be there, um, but it, it, the light is going to be different. The sky is going to be different. So that was some excellent uh, advice and insights into photography from John Hooten. And um, John runs some very successful workshops as well where he brings people along the Dingle Peninsula itself on beaches to um, cliff sides that we are right now. You can get more information on John on www.john-hooten.com and he has also published two books um, of his photos as well over the years. So if you want to find out more on that, again, you'll be able to find more on John's um, website. So for another edition of uh, In the Landscape Photography Profiles, I hope you enjoyed it and look forward now to the uh, next uh, edition and the next photographer that I'll meet along this series. Mm -hmm.